field, you would buy everything that you can, top of the line, organic, but it's not really realistic when you're training. So uh, when you're training, you're going to have three major food groups. So you have your grains, you're going to have your vegetables, and you're going to have your, 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 meat, uh, dairy, or your meat, dairy, poultry, and, and fish. So when it comes to grains, um, pretty straightforward, uh, fairly inexpensive. I would just encourage you to branch out beyond uh, you know, rice and pasta. Try something a bit more exotic like bulgur wheat or quinoa or spelt and uh, just mix things up a little bit. Okay, so now when it comes to vegetables and, and your meat. Obviously the huge question is whether or not to shell out the cash for organic. Um, I think the most important thing to realize is that uh, at this point in time, the term organic is basically, it's a commodity. Um, it doesn't guarantee a great product and uh, it's not going to guarantee that it's even free from um, all the bad things that you don't want. And at the end of the day, um, you know, a small farm that can't afford to get certified as organic, their produce is still going to be just as amazing as, you know, a huge factory farm that happens to be organic. So when it comes to vegetables, ultimately, uh, there hasn't really been any body of research that shows that organic vegetables are more nutritious than inorganic vegetables. Uh, the real problem lies in what you're getting in non-organic vegetables in addition to the nutrients. So mainly, you know, pesticides, um, run, uh, contaminating runoffs in the soil from hormones and antibiotics and that sort of thing. And so the best thing to do is, well ultimately the best thing to do is to buy all of your vegetables from a farmer's market. One, it guarantees that you're buying local, you're supporting the farmers, and you're probably going to get a better product. But if you can't do that, you know, it is cheaper just to go to your local Tesco or Sainsbury's or your local store and feel free to buy inorganic produce. But what you need to do and really, really need to put the extra effort into is how you process the vegetables once you get them home. All you need to do, get all your vegetables, you want to fill up a big vat of um, a combination of water and salt. You want to look for some fine grain sea salt and you want to add one teaspoon of salt for every cup of water. So get all your vegetables, put them in soak for about five to ten minutes, uh, agitate it every so often, and then after ten minutes rinse it off in cold water and store them properly. This will ensure that the majority of, of any pesticides are, are going to be rinsed off and, and ready to eat. Now when it comes to meat, poultry, and fish, this is where you want to spend your money. And this is because there is a huge difference in the composition of, for example, organic grass-fed beef compared to, you know, disgusting factory farm beef. And the composition shows up in the differences in the fats that are there. So if you look at organic grass-fed beef uh, compared to, like I said, factory farm beef, you're going to see a difference in saturated fat by approximately 50% more saturated fat in, in farm factory beef. But one of the most important things is actually the difference in the ratio between your omega-6s and your omega-3s. So in grass-fed beef, you're going to see a ratio of uh, 0.16 to 1, which means that you are getting more omega-3s, whereas in uh, factory, you know, factory beef, um, the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 can be as high as 20 to 1. Now, this is of significance to all athletes because one, this ratio, um, you know, a high ratio of threes to sixes is what promotes uh, a, lean, a lean body composition, but even more importantly, it reduces inflammation, which obviously when you're training at a high rate, we want to reduce that as much as possible. And so the other thing I want to discuss also is, is fish. Now, just because you are buying, you know, Atlantic salmon, it does not mean that it was actually made or caught in the Atlantic. <laughs> Um, you know, you really, really need to pay attention and read the fine print. Uh, again, while you know there, there haven't been conclusive studies on this, um, you know, problems with with fish farming include things. You know, again, you have vaccinations, antibiotics, colorings that are, are added to the meat to make it look fresher, um, forcing um, hormonal changes because perhaps male or female sexes tend to grow larger and more quickly, and just all of the pollution and contamination that happens in in these farm pools when you have these high densities and the water isn't being, isn't being cleaned or removed. And so I would definitely encourage you to um, you know, seek out wild caught fish. And I, know, I warn you, this is going to be expensive. And if you find a cheaper version, then you're buying the wrong thing. And you probably want to look at the fine print. So a couple of, of ways to, to get around this. One, um, buy the expensive product, just buy less of it and you can supplement with things like cottage cheese or Greek yogurt or beans. 
Uh, the other thing that you can do is invest in a large deep freezer and find a farmer, purchase the whole cow, purchase the wild caught fish in bulk and, and just store it in the freezer.